Hi all. Okay, we're going to do this one a bit differently. This is designed the Illusion Hex A, which is a simplified version of another design I'm playing with. And I wanted to go through the sequence of events. Rather than going through how I've designed it, we'll just go through the sequence and you'll be able to see why the facets are in particular positions. As all, I do this by meat point faceting and four meat point faceting. And normally under Gem Cut Studios, you can use the cutting assistant to work your way through all the facets to check that you've got your sequencing right. And so the thing will cut without any much problems. But I'm going to do this one differently. I'm going to do it this way. Now the first cut is the P1 facet which sets the temporary center point and that is the refer reference point for every other facet that's cut from now on in. Everything refers back to that. For example, the next facet, the P2 facet, meets the P1 facet at the temporary center point. The first four facets are to one center point, and you can try to get that one to center, even if you're on a rough grit. Because normally you cut the stone down to a bit of a rough grit. To the center point, and then gradually shape the stone as part of the other facets. In some cases, as you go down the facets, you go down the grits until they get finer and finer. So you're then ready for polishing. Now, after we get the two edge facets and the four corner facets, or the four side facets, we'll set the girdle. Now, on this particular design, as we can see here, The crown is relatively low, very low in fact. What gives it depth is the zigzag girdle on the sides and the side facets. And they're the equivalent of the high girdle fat correction, a high crown facet. This lowers the overall height of the stone. And I think it'd probably be very good for a ring. Because you can mount it low into the metal and it won't stick up high where it will get caught or scratched or whatever. Anyway, as you can see, the crown is very low. But normally when you cut this, you cut that, that the girdle facet so that there's enough free stone to cut the crown facet afterwards. So that might be even deeper on yours, but this is because I've the particular way I'm going through it, it is relatively shallow. Now if we do this, the side facets, we do them at the side girdle facet at an angle. And that brings back the girdle from a low point to a high point. And again, it is this facet is to cut the stone to size. So that is the width of your stone. So you try to get as much of the stone as possible and that determines the overall dimension of the stone when it's finished. Same with the other girdle, you cut the other corners and that's the length and the other one is the width. So that's the maximum width you can get out of it and that's the maximum length you could get out of it. It all depends on the size of your stone. If the stone was smaller these would be back further or back deeper but it all depends on the size of the stone. The next facet is the P3 facet, and if we go there, 
Again, it meets back to this point here where G1 and G2 meet. If we go back, G1 and G2 meet at a point. You set your girdle to your width of your stone. That gives you that point there, which is what your next um, cut is going to be cut to, the G2. That joins that. The P3 is to the same point. That lowers the culette and gets rid of the temporary center point. And this one actually is close to where the new center point is going to be. The P4 is cut to the same point again. It creates these extra facets here which gives the stone an extra sparkle. But the meeting point is this point down here, the G1 and G2 intersection. And the final facet, sorry, made a mistake, is cut to the center point, which is actually the permanent center point, which is actually set by P3. That point there in the center is the new center point that the P4, sorry, the P5 is cut to. But they all refer back to this center point, which was referred back to the, the old center point, which then creates the new center point. And that's completely done. Then it's half time, change ends. We go to the crown. The crown is simply mainly level the girdles out. You might push the wrong stone. In this case, we're leveling the pointy girdles edges. You can see the girdle is brought down to the thickness that you want. In this case, it's for approximately about three percent or five percent. And that sets your level of your girdle. Then you bring back the other, the C2 facet to the same point, edge of the girdle, the next one is the same to one point and the other point to the other end. This gives you this angled pieces. Final facet levels the G1 facet from the G2 height, so it's all all the level, sorry, all the girdle is level all the way around, and that creates. And then the last type facet you cut is the table, which is then referred back to that point and that point, which is where this facet and that facet meets. It's also between where that facet and this facet meets and that facet meets to give you the other point that the table is cut down to. You can see that from that temporary center point Gives you these points, which is then sets all these facets up, which is then transferred over to the, the girdle, by the girdle to the crown, which will give us that point, which gives us that facet, which gives us that point for that facet, which then gives you a point to cut that facet across the top to set your girdle level again, and that's where your table is set. So it all follows back to that one point way back in the girdle. Even though it's not there anymore, but that is the reference point.
and that's the sequence how you cut the sequence and this is also why the sequence is so important when you're designing so that when you just do cut it you know where you're going to cut it to what points and we'll just have a look at the this is on quartz angles the aim of the stone is to give a wide response lengthways but because of that the vertical twist the vertical angles have got huge windows but like I said in a ring you bring your rings from side to side you get a range of sparkle going right across the stone in the center there is some what's called bow tying the blue is the head shadow the green is the window the blue is basically dark spots that appear in the stone 